Hi there, welcome back. This is a quadratic expression video in algebraic fractions and we're looking today at factorizing monic quadratic trinomials. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? Let's have a look at what it means. Okay, factorizing monic quadratic trinomials. Now an expression, an algebraic expression, is often in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. There's some number in front of an x squared, there's another number in front of an x usually, and then there's another number on its own. Now when it's in that form, we call it a quadratic trinomial. We call it a trinomial because there's three terms in the original here and we are going to factor, factorize it into uh, two sets of brackets and there's going to be four terms altogether in those brackets so that's where we get the quad bit quad meaning four so that's where we get the names sounds a bit strange but an example of a quadratic trinomial is this x squared which uh, if you think about it, it has an invisible one in front of it so we've got a number in front of an x squared we've got a 7 in front of an x and we've got a number on its own so that's a typical quadratic trinomial we've got an x squared we've got an x and then we've got a normal number okay now what we do is we label the different numbers um, using little letters just to see where we're going here to give us a bit of a reference point so the a in this uh, particular example underneath it is a 1 as we saw the, we call the number 7 in the B position and uh, we'd say C equals 10 here just to give us a bit of an idea because there's a bit of a system we use for factorizing these monic quadratic trinomials A equals 1 in this case B equals 7 and C equals 10 and what we'll find is well uh, when, when, when that front number is a 1 that's where we get the monic mono meaning 1 monorail, one rail. <laughs> so uh, when A, that front number is a 1, we call the expression a monic quadratic trinomial. Okay, now if we want to factorize this, what we'll do is we'll turn that into brackets that I mentioned before. We'll have x's in the front of each bracket and we're looking to fill up the brackets in these spaces here with particular numbers depending on the clues that we get from the actual original expression. Let's have a look. We look for two numbers to complete the brackets to go in the first bracket and the second bracket. Now there's clues from the actual um, original expression. Let's have a look. The two numbers we look for to fill in the brackets there when we're factorizing these things, the two numbers will multiply to give, together to give that C number at the end, the number that's on its own. So the two numbers will have a product of that C number and they'll also add up to give that number in front of the X. So they'll have a sum of that B number. I'll show you in an example and we'll understand from that. So we'll say the product of the two numbers that go in the brackets when we factorize this is uh, is C and the sum is B. That'll be the basis of our system here. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind down the bottom there. Let's have a look at an example. Let's factorize that x squared plus 7x plus 10 that we used as the example. We're going to look to fill in those brackets there. The two numbers will multiply together to give 10 in this case. They'll have a product of 10 and the two numbers will also uh, go together to give 7. They'll add together to give 7. So they'll have a sum of 7. Now we set up our work using those clues uh, using a PSF method here. We just said that the two numbers that we look for in the, to go in the brackets there have a product of 10, a sum of 7. And so if two numbers have a product of 10, we know that those, uh, those two numbers must be from a list of factors of 10. You know, factors are two pairs of numbers that go together to, to give another number. So if we get the factors of 10, we will uh, find our answer, uh, the two numbers that need to go into the brackets when we factorize, from that list of factors somehow. All right, so we call this method the PSF method. The product is the 10, the sum is the number that goes in front of the x, in this case the 7, and we'll, now we'll, our next step is to list the factors of 10. So we have 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Now we stare carefully at these pairs here. 1 and 10, if we added them together, would make 11, and uh, that's not helpful for us. But look at these two numbers. They, they multiply together to give 10, and at the same time, if we added them, we'd get 7. So that's a perfect pair for us to use in this particular factorization. So these two numbers here go in those brackets there. So we've chosen those two numbers from the list of factors of uh, 10, in this case, and we've uh, been attracted by a pair that also adds together to give 7. 
Now we can always check our answers here. When we factorize, we can always go backwards and reverse our uh, method here and, and expand. If we expand our uh, brackets here, we should get back to x squared plus 7x plus 10 if we've got the right factors here. So if we expand that, we get x outside of x plus 5 and plus 2 outside of x plus 5 which is kind of splitting that bracket there if you if you're not sure of this you there's a video on expanding binomial products but if we uh, expand and check our answer here we'll get this and uh, so when x times x x squared x times 5 is 5x 2 times x is 2x and 2 times 5 is 10 and you'll notice we've got some like terms here that can join up so when we join those two up I think we're on track here. We get x squared plus 10x, sorry, plus 7x plus 10. Now, so that's a bit of a pretty key point here. If you've got five minutes at the end of a test and you get some factors here, you can always expand it and see if you get back to the original expression, and then you'll know you've done the right thing. Okay. So quite a process, but let's have a look at another couple of examples. We've got x squared minus 12x plus 32 here. We're looking to fill up the brackets there. The two numbers in this case will have a product of 32, and they'll add together to give minus 12 in this case. Now to add together to give minus 12, we'll know we'll be in using at least one minus number here. Okay, we'll have a look at the factors of 32. We've got 1 and 32, 2 and 16, and 4 and 8. So can you see which ones we might use to in order to make minus 12 out of it as well? Um, and if you stare at that long enough, now you, now you can have different combinations of pluses and minuses of these pairs of numbers as well if you need to. And we need to make minus 12 when we add these two things together. And we need to have, if, if we're going to have at least one minus here, when we multiply, we want to get, get a positive number, a positive 32. So I'm here to tell you that both of these numbers need to be negative in this case. So we'll use minus 4 and minus 8. If you look at those, if you add them together, you get minus 12. And if you multiply them, a minus times a minus makes a plus, and we'll get 32 out of that. It's a bit of an art form, this, but somewhere in that list of factors, you should find two numbers that go together well to fit those two criteria, the criteria of finding uh, a product of 32 and a sum of minus 12 in this case. All right, so we'll fill in that bracket, and as uh, we saw in the previous example, we could uh, expand that, and when we expand it, I'll just do it quickly. Uh, we do get our answer there, x squared minus 12x plus 32. That was our original expression. So that's just a double check, that expanding. So we have a product of 32 and a sum of minus 12. And we found a pair of factors that fit the bill if we play around with the minuses and the pluses. We should be able to find a successful pair there. Let's have a look at another one. x squared minus 3x minus 4. This time we're going to fill in the brackets again, and the product this time needs to be minus 4, and the sum needs to be minus 3. So there's going to be some minuses involved somewhere. Let's have a list of factors of uh, 4, 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. Now if you have a look at that, um, 2 and 2 isn't going to add together to give minus 3 no matter what, but an arrangement of 1 and 4 should be able to get, get there. So if we have... Oh, well, I've also got... I don't know where that 4 and 8 came from, just ignore that. <laughs> okay, um, let's move on. So if we have a plus 1 and a minus 4 there, they will add together to give minus 3 and multiply together to give minus 4. So I'm pretty confident with those ones. Okay, um, so we fill in the brackets there. And if we wanted to uh, double check, we'd expand our... Uh, answer, our factorized answer, and see if we get back to the question, and we do. There we go. So we've got a couple of uh, pairs there. I'm not sure. This, this, this stuck in from the last slide. Apologies for that. Just ignore that. <laughs> we'll move on. Let's have a look at another example. m squared this time. They're not always x's. m squared plus 5m uh, minus 24. We need two numbers that have a product of minus 24 and a sum of 5. You'll get used to this PSF method when you get a bit of practice. We'll list the factors of 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. Now I'm already looking at 3 and 8 because they are 5 apart here. And uh, with the right combination of pluses and minuses, that looks like a, a good deal. So you do get better and faster at these. 3 and 8, if we get a plus 8 and a minus 3, that will multiply together to give a minus, which we need. And uh, the plus 8 minus 3 on the number, number line will give us a 5. So somewhere in those list of factors, those pairs, we'll get some numbers that work if we play around with the pluses and minuses.
So put that in. If we checked once again, we'll scroll through this quickly. Lo and behold, we do get back to our original expression, so that's a good double check. All right, there we have it. That's factorizing monic trinomials, quadratic trinomials. Quite a process, but get lots of practice at that, and I'm sure you'll get better and better and faster and faster at it. All the best, PeterBlakeMath.com.